I'm Fiona Godley, Editor-in-Chief of the BMJ, and I'm very, very honoured to be welcoming you all to this uh, webinar on COVID known unknowns. Um, the, the, problem, the beginning of the seminar, the, the, the idea behind the seminar came as a result of conversations actually, uh, initially Alison Pollock, who's one of our speakers, um, worrying a bit about polarisation, sent some emails around, George Davy Smith responded um, with a very measured um, uh, discussion about the need to acknowledge the uncertainties of the many, many things that we still don't know and may never know about COVID-19 and how we can um, really try to reclaim the debate, reason debate, that would allow um, progress with the science and with the policy um, and to try to move away from this very polarised, polarised, politicised and, and sometimes personalised um, debate that has the, the way in which the debate has, has moved. Uh, social media contributing both to the positive and the negative sides of that um, and, and many good people on, on all sides of the debate contributing but the general atmosphere being one where people are beginning to feel under attack and where the progress may not have been quite as good as we might have hoped. So this meeting is really an intend, intended to help to open up that debate, to level it out, to encourage rational, um, um, a, a, a less poisonous tone to some of these very important issues that we need to consider um, in this very fascinating, challenging and difficult time that faces us all. Uh, so that's the purpose of the meeting. We've got a fantastic lineup of international speakers, wonderful chairs, hope it will be interactive as much as possible. Very many thanks um, to, to our uh, support at the BMJ and at the University of Bristol for getting this webinar up and running uh, and very much looking forward to the day. With that, let me hand over to George Davy Smith. Thanks, and George, uh, you're... Yeah, thanks. Yeah, go. <laughs> thanks, Fiona. So I'm uh, sharing my uh, slides just to to um, show, to show whether it uh, uh, can be done, so that it, that, so it does, so it's possible. So uh, um, in um, science in general, the fundamental um, a, a fundamental premise uh, is you've got to be open uh, to evidence, uh, and this is uh, beautifully uh, summed up by the person who introduced Mendelian uh, genetics to the world, William Bateson when he said you needed to treasure your exceptions, that you, what you learned from when things went against what you expected, because that was actually going to take forward what you knew. If you just found things which um, reinforced what you already believed, that wasn't, going to, that wasn't a learning experience or that wasn't advancing uh, science. Uh, or uh, the uh, physicist, uh, Paul Feynman, uh, always said that the best thing to hear wasn't someone shouting out Eureka, it was someone who was uh, musing that that was interesting, that something they saw wasn't what they accepted. And that is, a, that is the fundamental sort of self-image of science, that scientists are disinterested, they're open uh, to evidence, that their conclusions are always provisional and are always waiting uh, to be changed as the world actually reveals uh, itself through scientific exploration. But of course, that, I mean, that principle is a difficult principle to hold in the situation of a pandemic. You know, pandemic requires action and therefore so things uh, need to be done and need to be done uh, on and with uh, uncertain evidence. So these, this generates a tension, a, a necessary tension, a tension which is necessary, can't be thought of as being got rid of. But that tension leads to unfortunate consequences such as polarization, where people start uh, promulgating more and more strongly um, as though the, there is perfect evidence for views they have when in reality that doesn't exist. And I think uh, COVID has seen that polarization uh, in spades. And uh, I think the intent with this meeting was to uh, demonstrate you can actually have discussion which in, which involves that fundamental science, uh, scientific disinterest and um, notion that you need to be open uh, to learning. I um, mean, in the last couple of days, this has, this has been revealed, uh, or you know, just uh, has been de demonstrated yet again by the response to the publication of really the first randomised controlled trial 
uh, of, of, of mask use. Um, this was a study of um, people wearing masks um, and seeing whether that protected them from an infection. And of course, mask wearing is also, or, me or maybe mainly, uh, to protect the other people, to protect the, the people from the mask wearer rather than the mask wearer from other people. Um, but this, uh, this study um, you know, was a randomized uh, trial and certainly there was some notion that masks might protect people. That is one of the reasons that uh, people may wear them. And what it showed uh, in a randomized study where people were randomized to, wearing, uh, to wear masks or not, it showed evidence of a small uh, protective effect, so about 20, 15, 20% protection. But the way that this has been, was presented was that this, this effect was not uh, statistically significant. Uh, and, people, and this has been was put forward as saying that this study definitively proves that masks don't work. And, uh, and, and this has been seen by people who are you know, leaders in evidence-based medicine who would normally uh, be very critical of the notion of using the statistical significance at all. And will have in their teachings have said that um, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So if you don't have strong evidence um, that something exists, that doesn't mean you have evidence that that doesn't exist. So on the one hand, you have this being said to confirm the views that masks didn't work. And then on the other hand, you had it said that it should be completely um, uh, ignored this study, that it wasn't <laughs> blind. So the notion of doing a study of masks when people were blind, didn't know that they were wearing the masks is a, is a tricky one to think and that they, you know, and that it should, that the study should be withdrawn. So this polarization uh, is, is definitely seen. And um, um, but the hope is that we can um, have discussion of uh, issues which are contentious and which are necessarily um, uh, and, and that are, necessar are necessarily concretized by having to make decisions in the time of a pandemic, but realized also the necessity uh, to be, uh, if we're going to be open to scientific advances to help uh, um, deal with this uh, situation, uh, to retain the uh, usual uh, notions of uh, scientific uh, uh, uncertain uncertainty. And uh, um, with that, I'm going to pass on to uh, to, um, to Phil, who's going to be MC the day uh, for us. Uh, thank you very much, George. Before you go, um, just to get the ball rolling, can you tell us one thing um, that uh, you've got wrong or some, one thing you expected that turned out not to be the case during this pandemic, George? Okay, yeah, in the, in the conflict of interest statement of the editorial we wrote oh, yes. for, the, for the BMJ, uh, I listed two things. Uh, one is that I thought that uh, children would be multipliers of the infection. Uh, as we've seen with other seasonal coronaviruses, that, uh, it, that when they when they arrived as they uh, as they as they do, they would uh, arrive and be multiplied through kids, and that's been the opposite of what's been seen with primary school children. And uh, secondly, I thought there would be substantial mortality displacement because the very elderly and people with pre-existing medical conditions uh, have been um, uh, have been particularly vulnerable and uh, the high, high, have had very high mortality rates. And I thought that uh, as, uh, as we entered summer, we would see reductions in mortality rates amongst that group because of this mortality displacement. And that's not been seen. So both of those I was spectacular. You've, you've, you've had to change your position. I love the, the strap line for your paper in the BMJ. Uh, the more certain someone is about COVID-19, the less you should trust them. Yeah. Can you imagine good. Boris Johnson opening a press conference with that statement? That would be... Quite a thing, wouldn't it? Well, that would be good. So thank you, uh, George. Uh, my name is Dr. Phil Hammond. Uh, I'm an associate specialist in paediatric chronic fatigue at the Royal United Hospital in Bath. Uh, and I also work as a journalist and broadcaster, uh, I guess most notably for Private Eye magazine. Uh, so I've been reporting on COVID two and a half thousand words every fortnight since the beginning. Uh, and the one big thing that I got wrong uh, in January is that I thought SARS-CoV-2 uh, would behave like SARS-CoV-1, uh, so we'd be able to spot it fairly quickly, close it down, and it wouldn't uh, become a pandemic. To my eternal shame, I tweeted in January that I predicted more people would die falling down the stairs uh, this year than from SARS, because that was in fact the case in the UK in 2003, uh, and I've kept that tweet up there to remind me uh, how absolutely wrong uh, I can be. Uh, so I'm delighted to uh, be sort of emceeing this. We have lots of chairs in a very packed day, so the less you see of me, probably the better. Uh, we've divided the day into four sections. So there are little 15 minute breaks in between 
obviously you can dip in and dip out. We've got nearly 500 participants already, over 2000 registered. Uh, we'd love to have your questions. Obviously we can't answer all the questions, but uh, Nikki and the team will be monitoring questions and you'll hear from her. Uh, we'll pick a selection of questions and then perhaps collate all of them later. Uh, and also uh, we're hoping you will tweet uh, your observations as the day unrolls, uh, hashtag COVID unknowns uh, is what we're using. So that's all one word, hashtag uh, COVID unknowns. Uh, and uh, hopefully by the end of the day, perhaps not a consensus, but we'll at least understand the complexity of what we're dealing with. And what's so fascinating about this day is that we're getting perspectives from all over the world, uh, which is how we're going to be kicking off.